Hey, my name's Justin, and this is The Art of Repair. And today I'm going to show you not only how to take off and harvest an FPC connector, but I'm going to teach you how to put it right back on too. Oh man, you heard me right. I'm going to teach you about FPC connectors today. We're going to learn how to harvest them off the board, and then we're going to learn how to put them back on. And then, throughout the entire thing, you're going to hear a lot of the same stuff I've said before, because guess what? Fundamentals! As long as you know your fundamentals, everything's going to come easy to you. So if you hear me say something more than once, there's a good reason. Let's go ahead and get started here. God, I don't know what this is. Maybe a Note 5 or something like that. Let's see. Yeah, it's got the little switch. Note something. I don't know. All right. So what have we got here? We have got some little FPC connectors. I mean, we got a couple different ones. I mean, which one y'all want to do we can do all of them if you want doesn't matter i would say let's go ahead and grab this big one down here because you know what the bigger these things are the harder they are to do okay so we might as well just do the hard one right all right so here's the thing we talked in another video about lifting it up prior to actually getting the like getting the component off or anything like that to give it a little bit of a tug on it okay but this time we're also going to kind of introduce a side to side wiggle okay so kind of side to side lift up while you're kind of working on it and everything we do need to approach these things a little bit different though just because it's kind of got multiple different materials in it okay it's got high density materials that would be like the different metals like copper and you know whatever else we got on here and uh, all the solder alloys and stuff and then we also have the plastics so we've got high density and low density materials in the same you know area on the same component okay that creates some challenging hurdles if you don't know how to handle it okay so with that being said we are going to lower the temperature just a little bit okay normally like i've been saying I, r I usually run things 345, 350-ish. Um, that's my kind of general day-to-day, -day, you know, on and off kind of stuff. Um, we're going to use a little bit lower this time, maybe like 330, okay? Um, and we did talk about using and not using flux, I think, on this one that I will. Um, like I said, the only time you would not use flux uh, is for certain, like, harvesting situations where you don't want to disturb the stuff around it. Um, but this one, you know, it's an FPC connector. We want it to be nice and pristine and everything. So let's just, you know, go ahead and throw it on there. If you are in a very sensitive area, you got to do what you got to do. It's still going to work just fine now. Um, all right. So we've got our temperature at 330. We're still running kind of half airflow here. Um, when you're approaching this thing, you kind of don't want to sit in one area with the heat for too long. The reason why is it'll kind of It'll kind of throw off the equilibrium um, across the entire rest of the connector. What do I mean by that? If you have plastic on one side that is one temperature and you have plastic on another side that is another temperature, it's going to warp. And that's the big problem. People get in here, they're like, oh, you know, I know how to do the little baby, you know, 01.5s. I know how to do the 0201s. I can do all the little antennas, all the little, you know, clippy clips and everything. They're super easy. But for some reason, every time I take one of these things off, it bends. Let's go ahead and get this thing off. Um, we're gonna kind of approach this by grabbing part of the metal portion because if you grab some of the plastic, if it heats up enough, you may just destroy the whole thing. All right. So we're gonna kind of heat it up evenly. The flux itself is gonna be more thinner. Well, it's gonna be thinner just because it's been activated. We're gonna grab it in our little spot. You see I'm wiggling the board. You know, I ask you guys all the time, did it look like I was scared? Did it look like this was killing me? Like I was like sweating bullets, like, it, I'm not, and I'm going to keep asking you that because I don't want you to be sweating bullets. I don't want you to be worried about this repair because you need to be thinking about this repair like you do a screen repair. It's not that big a deal. It's super easy. In fact, I would rather be doing board work all day than changing screens. It's just 
it's just a better time okay so now let's take a look at our little component here look at that that is pretty straight there's a slight warp and as they get bigger you are always going to get some sort of slight warp unless you really really take your time with it um but not enough to really affect anything and not really enough to you know stop it from doing your job or anything like that that's that's pretty dang straight that's almost 100 percent um so now that we've done that we're going to move it out of the way for a second and we're going to clean up this board and we're going to re-alloy it very very simple we've still got some flux on there not that big a deal we're just going to go in with our iron real fast and clean up the area and All we're doing is re-alloying the thing. You know, we're just putting some new alloy on it. Make sure it's good. It's a lower melting point, so it's going to melt earlier than the solder surrounding it. So if I had a ton of other components, doing this simple step alone is going to it's going to make it a lot easier because you're not going to have to worry so much about melting the solder around it and damaging stuff. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Uh, no, it's a little uneven. Let's go ahead and fix that. You really don't want uneven blobs on this thing because it'll prevent it from sitting down properly. Alright, looks like everything else is pretty good. So let's take our little FPC connector here. Drop it on there. And there you go, it's done. No, I'm just kidding. We're just gonna line it up real nice and straight. All right, so we can see here it's pretty much lined up. What's gonna happen here is when we heat it up, and this is really important. We don't have thermal linkage anymore. If you haven't seen my video on thermal linkage, it's very important because it does have aspects of it that carry over into like low density plastics. You're gonna thermally saturate the FPC connector way before you actually thermally saturate the board. So you gotta be really careful and make sure you have even heat. Remember we were talking about earlier with the, the FPC connector warping because of the plastic? it's going to fill up with energy way faster now because it's not connected to a board that's heat sinking the energy away. That makes sense? Same thing. We're sitting on like 330, a uh, little over half airflow, nothing, no big deal. Uh, and we're going to kind of work our way back and forth. We're going to notice that things are going to start turning shiny. And how about that? It just pulled it right back down into place. So I would say the, the main thing you want to do at this point is you want to make sure every single little connector is connected so you can go by, you can touch it with your tweezers. If you see anything move, you know you're in trouble. Looks like everything is good to go. How about that? We just need to clean it up a little bit. Way lower temperature. Ooh. Hold this board. Down. There we go. Oh man, I really need a new Menda bottle. I don't know where it went. I think I took it to the store. I feel like I'm just like struggling with isopropyl right now. There we go. Just trying to make sure we get a lot of that up so we can see what's going on in here. Oh, 
I hate how blurry my camera is sometimes. But how about that? We got an FPC connector. It was not even that hard. It, it actually is kind of fun. And the bigger they get, the more accomplished you feel once you've done it. So if you've ever goofed off an FPC connector, they're not that hard to fix. Follow this little guide and you've got it. So I really hope you learned something today, took away something from this. Um, if you liked the video, make sure you like and subscribe. And if you have not already set up your notifications, make sure you do that. That way every time I put out a video, you know, YouTube kind of lets you know and everything like that. You'll get one of those really annoying boxes on the side of your, you know, computer from when you set up notifications. And, you know, you'll be like, oh, I hate that, but Justin put out a cool video, so I'll click it anyway. Anyway, have a wonderful day. Don't forget, guys, if you're interested in any of the tools I use, check out the description below. I even have my own custom tools that I sell down there as well that literally do not exist anywhere else on the planet except from the art of repair. I also have a Patreon where you can help support the channel so I can create even better high quality content.